Okay, hello everyone, can you hear me? Is it working? Please just let me know in the chat. Okay, very good. So, I'm very excited to see you. So, let me just uh, check. Hi, Manoj, Joshi. Hi, Manos. Hi, Franco. Hi, Aravind. I hope I do not mispronounce your name too badly. If I do, then I apologize. <laughs> hi, Peter. Hi, Raj. Okay, so as you may see, you see now a white background behind me. Uh, I'm in a new office that I moved into the day before yesterday, so everything is a bit new. I still have stuff on the floor lying around and my microphone is not ideal. So I hope that uh, the, the audio is fine. Uh, so I apologize for this, but I will take care of this in the next day. So the next live stream is going to be better. Okay, so then uh, what do I want to talk about to you uh, today? Uh, okay, hi, Mosba, hi, Asmelash. Okay, so today is not a Q&A session. Today is actually where I show you something. And my idea was a couple of weeks ago, as you can see here, um, to do kind of a tutorial or a case setup and uh, i discussed this with you what what is your what do you want to do and then we came up with this tutorial which is an ansys fluent tutorial and i think this is an excellent idea that because this way we can compare uh, the simulation results between openfoam and ansys but this tutorial results and then we can even bring it to the next level. And I have ideas about this. This is not going to happen today, but uh, let's see how far we come today until four and then I will uh, stop the live stream. I will upload my case files uh, to my GitHub account. I will put the download link be below this uh, live stream before the video after the live stream and then you can download it, try it out, maybe modify it. If you have something that you found out, then you can uh, write in the description, uh, in, in the comments below this video or you can send me an email and then maybe I can incorporate it next time into the live stream and then I want to bring it to a 3D and let's see how this will work in the next live streams but today is the first day to start this okay so this is our reference video so it is an ansys fluent tutorial and i want to do this flow in open form so let's just take a look at it uh, no no music because i get a copyright strike possibly so uh turbulent flow in a pipe two-dimensional case so let's see how we can set it up i have an idea okay so we have here a geometry and it is a longer video so i want to just jump ahead so the entire geometry is a rectangle and in the center there is a circle and now the question is how big is this rectangle and then i will just immediately jump in and run the tutorial okay or start with the implementing it okay so the length is one meter and the height is 0 0.1 meter so what i will do now i will just open up blender uh, you, you are welcome to use whichever geometry tool you want i really prefer blender and uh, i will just add a plane so how can you do this? This is here, add a mesh and then plane. And what I really like in Blender that you can uh, change between object mode and edit mode. And then this way we can select the nodes of uh, the individual nodes of this plane. And I can just define coordinates. So zero, zero and zero. And then I want to put this to um, also possibly zero 
and then the height is 0 0.1 what we said and then this is 1 meter and 0 0.1 meter and this is supposed to be 0 so this is now our geometry so currently we have now this exact geometry that he has 1 meter long and 0 0.1 meter high okay so let's see what's the next step is going to be and I guess this is the circle yes circle yes so the circle is I guess in the center with a diameter of let's see so yes the diameter is Okay, bear with me. Okay, so the land, the distance is 500. Okay, so it's in the center and it's in the, in the exact center, this circle and then the diameter is something that's interesting. Okay, it's 50. Okay, so we can just now again add uh, no, let's just move out of into object mode and let's add another circle which is too big so I'm just going to scale it down and scale it by a factor of 0 Okay, and now we position it into the center. So this is 0 0.5 and 0 0.05. Yes, now this is in the exact center. Okay, and now um, we can actually combine those two. So I just select both of them and press Ctrl J to join them. And now I have uh, my um, circle and my rectangle so what I do not want to have here is the face of the rectangle so how do I get rid of this so I just press delete and then delete this edge and then select these two and also add, only add the edges okay so currently we are at the same point as he is and now let's see about the mesh in this tutorial So if you want to know more about the commands, how to draw with Blender, there is a tutorial on my channel. Also, there is a very good channel, uh, Blender Guru by Andrew Price here. This is for artistic purposes, but there are basic tutorials, for example, this uh, donut tutorial teaches you how these basic movements uh, work and so and the, 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 I, I believe this 14 minute video is more than enough for open form okay so this is just a small interlude here okay I want to now know the mesh setup because now we have the, the geometry and now we can start the meshing okay let's just wait here until we see a little bit about the meshing. Okay, high XX. Make advanced size function off. Okay, I'm not interested in the ANSI specific settings. I just want to know the edge length here. Okay, now maybe we know more. Okay, so these are the side walls insert sizing now this is going to be interesting element number of divisions okay how many divisions do we do 200 hard that's great so we can do the same thing so we want to have 200 elements over the length so i'm just going to push here subdivide and i want to do 199 cuts so we end up with 200 elements. So the same here, right mouse button subdivide and 199. Um, 
yeah, that makes sense. Mm, and then let's see, I guess then we'll have 20 on the side, uh, on the inlet and outlet. Okay, so we have 50. Fifty divisions. Isn't that a bit too much? Okay, but okay. We can do fifty if you want. One hundred. Okay, so one hundred on the circle and here fifty. I'm a bit skeptical about fifty here because that's um, yeah, so I'm not sure about 50 on the inlet here. We are, he has a very, very fine refinement and then it coarsens and then it's fine. So I think I personally would put here uh, just 20 because everything else, the, the, then we don't have a uniform mesh and that has just uh, runtime and grid quality. So I, I just use here 19. Or no, 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 let, let, let's do it a different way. Let's just do here the segmentations. So let's see. Now this is just a judgment how far I want to do the regular grid. So I select maybe here a node and then the bottom node and press control. And now let's see whether this works. Where is it? Mesh and then face here face and then grid fill does this work no i i never know when the grid fill works um, okay then just let's do it the old-fashioned way just select these and then add the faces manually by pressing f And I have even a better idea how we can reduce our efforts. We can use symmetry planes here in Blender and then I don't have to do this again on the other side. I can actually do it. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so of course you could do something in block mesh. But I prefer to do it manually. Why? Because when I started with OpenFoam, uh, oh no, when I started with uh, CFD, in general, we I did use uh, Fluent at the beginning and then uh, and uh, manual mesher, which was called Gambit. And then when I started with OpenFoam, I did all my meshes with blend, uh, Gambit and imported the Fluent Mesh. But in Gambit, you did everything manually and you could do extremely high quality meshes if you did the mesh manually. And then this was uh, something that stuck with me that with the mesh quality, you can really reduce the simulation time. So this is why I really like to prefer in 2D cases to draw the mesh manually. Okay, but of course, if you have a better way to do it, just go ahead. And now I want to go, now it's the question until which point I want to have my structured grid and where do I want to start with my manual grid? Okay, I think that's good enough. And now I press Ctrl V no, I don't press Control R is what I press and I enter here 19 or no, not. Let's just enter here uh, this number of cells. Yeah, so this is more or less uh, uniform and then I will just now 
because I could not do the same thing on the other side, but it is easier if I delete these nodes here. Uh, vertices and I also delete the nodes here okay and maybe extrude uh, press E extrude in the X direction so this is now 0 0.1 and the same here extrude X 0 0.5 now we have here the same uh, length here good and now I can fill this up manually okay so let's see the comments do you have some comments up until now so Franco after one week blender tutorial adding donut glaze to my heat text yeah I, I know this I, this happened to me also I missed the relevant setting in the newer ANSYS version Okay, so then how do I do here the meshing? Okay, so my grid is finer here than here. So uh, with, by pressing Control R, I will ref. No, you know what? We should really uh, refine here uh, the entire mesh. We with, by adding one additional subdivision. And now we have here more or less the same size here as well as on the, this uh, circle. So what I really like to do in this case, if I want, want to transition from a regular grid into uh, another, another kind of, or to a curved surface, I really like to grab here these nodes. I extrude them in the X direction. Uh, in the X direction so approximately to here and now I can just grab these four nodes press F and I have my quad and press here as well and now maybe even here and I think I'm going to lose my my upper half here and just concentrate here okay and now what I like to do is how do I add here cells and something uh, it's something that uh, uh, this is done here automatically but uh, I think this is the pave algorithm because it, uh, from Gambit that, it, that they use also in ANSYS so they somehow calculate how they stretch the mesh and then they add these points here where they can just uh, add uh, an additional um, uh, cell so I like to um, extrude and then just eyeball the, the, the grid, create here an, a, an F and then extrude it to the bottom. And then this creates a quad and then here I can also extrude. This creates a quad, this creates a quad and then I can just move this to a better position and now I can just grab this extrude it in the X direction uh, again extrude in the X direction extrude here extrude here and then extrude this and then extrude this and then I'm just going to put this to 0 0.4 oh, no 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 0 0.5 good and now I don't really need this vertex and now we can just fill this up no that's not what I wanted Okay, and now it's only about the meshing here in the top. So what can we do here? I can fill up this part and now it's the question, how do I want to progress here? I think I can just extrude this point and then fill it in. 
and I think I can also extrude it to 0 0.5 and let's just create here a cell here a cell and then let's just say that's also good enough and now um, we could just use two cells here but I'm not very uh, satisfied with the mesh quality here so let's just delete this one and then extrude one here and then extrude another one here and then we need I guess another one yes yeah you always end up with one cell which is not the best but that's okay for me okay so uh, if i compare this of course the mesh refinement here is not the best but um, we can just chuck in no no that's not what i wanted here can i yeah so here it's not the best but what i can do is i want to actually delete this upper layer and then just mirror everything yes so i um, yeah so yeah so let's just uh, maybe no that's not what i wanted let's just subdivide it one times and then we have a, a relatively fine mesh here and now i can um, yeah it's the best if i just move it down and 0 0.05 uh, all transformation and now just use where is it no that's not they changed here the modifiers yes so i want the mirror in the x direction yes and i want the mirror in the y direction excellent yes so and now we have here a 2d mesh that i can now just use for an open pop simulation okay so let's see about the comments can you make video on how to extract aerodynamic forces yes so this is something that we can do uh, so forces cd coefficients uh, maybe not on this but i thought that once we finish this geometry then we could go 3d and do the same exact things uh, on a sphere that's something i wanted to do now since the first um, community christmas competition where the goal was to calculate the the forces and uh, the drag of the monkey head uh, i wanted to do the, these kinds of simulations uh, um, for a long time so once we finish this we can bring it to the next level into 3d and then calculate the flow around the sphere and then we can calculate the, uh, the drag of that and then you can derive it for your case okay so now we have a mesh so now it would be really a very good time to save so in the documents and then maybe youtube and then oh i have a live folder so let's just create here tutorial one and then let's just call it tutorial one and i will provide you this uh, blender file and i want to export it as an obg file in tutorial one and i have and this is maybe something for you uh, if you want to export an obg file in blender the direction is always by default minus z you have to change this to y forward 
in order to have the same axis then also in Paraview as you have it here in Blender. So export it as 2 to 1 OBG. Okay, and now we can just jump in generating the actual mesh in OpenFoam because as you know, OpenFoam cannot handle 2D meshes. You always need uh, 3D mesh, but in the Y direction you create just one cell. So let's just do this. Uh, I saw their uh, comment. Hi, hi, uh, hi, Muhammad. Hi, Long. Thank you. You're welcome, Muhammad. Okay, so then let's just move ahead. So it was in my documents in YouTube live and tutorial one. Okay, then let's just create a mesh folder, copy tutorial one OBG into mesh. And now what do we need? We need a system folder and we need an extract mesh dictionary. So I never know where I, <laughs> where there is an extra uh, mesh. So let's just look for an extrude mesh dictionary in tutorials I guess extrude mesh dict there you go there are uh, several extrude mesh over simple foam airfoil polyline uh, let's let's do this this is not the pen not so bad into uh, let's just copy the entire system folder that's very good okay and then let's just explorer and system extrude mesh okay so uh, another comment, it would be great if the forces can be extracted for rotational objects in sliding mesh. Okay, so uh, we can bring this even to another level, uh, but step by step. So we can take a look at uh, moving meshes. Uh, I have, <laughs> I planned an overset mesh that I want to create, but I just didn't find, with the moving into the new office, I didn't have the time, but it, I already set up a case, I just have to make the video with overset mesh. It's not uh, for this kind of problems, but then in a live stream we can derive a uh, moving mesh. But step by step, let's start with a small case and then go from there. Okay, so we don't need this. What I really like to, I, I never know the entries in extrude mesh. So what I really like to do, I don't you want to use polylines, so I just write here blah blah. And uh, the surface is not in constant, but it is 2 to 1 dot obg in, in, the, in the mesh folder. So I want to construct from a surface. You can construct from surface or mesh or patch. We don't want to do mesh or patch. So ah, that's uh, flip normals. That's something that I always forget, but I always tell you to do. So check the normal directions, whether all the faces have the same normals. Hi, can, how can you do this? You click here and then show the, the face normals. This looks good because sometimes uh, there is, okay, I just heard something. So yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's, go. So, so this is now uh, the, face normal so this looks good so I don't want to flip it for now and let's just delete the entries regarding polyline uh, and just um, execute so I just source version 2012 and let's just see what the error message is extrude mesh okay so extrude mesh blah blah is not correct uh, so, uh, yeah, so I want to use linear normal. Okay, then extrude mesh, thickness is not found. Yeah, so I have to add the thickness. So if we have a length of 0 0.1 of meter, so maybe 0 0.01. 
would be a thickness. Okay. So we don't have now here uh, an open foam, open dot foam file. So I just created it and now I can take a look at it in Paraview. Could you please maybe do ANSYS tutorials? No, I'm focusing on open foam, sorry. And I am not very good in ANSYS. So sorry, I uh, am only doing open foam tutorials. Okay, so let's see the mesh. Okay, and now we have here our 2D mesh. Okay, so a thickness, I'm not very happy about the thickness. Ah, okay, and we have been, <laughs> okay, we have to change this, of course. So I don't want to have 200 layers, I want to have only one cell and then 0 0.01. So let's just re execute extrude mesh. Now that's better. Very good. So now the next question is the are the boundaries? How how are they defined? And now I wish that you could do something about this in uh, in extrude mesh, but you cannot. It is hard coded. So you have the original patch, which is the one side, and then the other side. And these names are hard coded in extrude mesh. So these two really should be the empty boundaries. And then you have the sides. So in the sides, we have our inlet or outlet and our walls. And we can check how it is done in the, the ANSYS tutorial. But uh, we have to now combine original patch and other side. And uh, there is no I mean, the easiest way is to just go to constant poly mesh and boundary and then just combine the two. How can you do that? Just manually reduce the number of boundaries to two. And then uh, the other side will be deleted. And now let me just, so you can see the number of faces in original patch and other side is the same. So what you just do here, it's 17,456 times two, so we have then 34,912. We just comment this out and we just call this the open foam way front and back. Yes, and if I now reload here, Now we have, uh, yes, so we only have now front and back and the sides. So front and back is, uh, what? Yeah, so it is very narrow. So you can see front and back, that's correct. One last thing, front and back surely should be empty. Empty because of the 2D simulations, okay. So now how can we get uh, our inlets and outlets in? Okay, there is a, a comment. Hi, first of all, thank for you this lesson. And are you going to upload this stream on YouTube? Yes. So the streams are automatically processed by YouTube and stored as a video. So after the conversion by YouTube is finished, then you can have you will have this uh, as a tutorial video on YouTube. So you can just rewatch it. And as I mentioned, I will put all the files onto my GitHub account and I will put a link to the files. I, maybe I will put it into a zip file and then I will just put the link in the description box below this video so you can download everything as far as I come. So maybe uh, we can start with the case setup or maybe we end with the mesh. I, I'm not sure, let's see. Uh, but yeah, so so uh, you can uh, rewatch this and also download the finished results later on. What solver are we using? We will use simple foam, but that this is the case setup step. So currently I just created the geometry just like the guy in the video and I created the mesh. Of course, I don't have the same automatic mesh algorithms available in open foam as he does in ANSYS. I just use my algorithm of, um, of now how many years of 
16 years of experience in CFD in general. Was it 16 years? Yes, it's 16 years. So, and you just saw how I created the mesh here. So here in, in the vicinity of this uh, circle, the mesh quality is not the best, but if I compare it to the mesh quality he here, then yeah, so it's maybe a bit better, but then further away, the mesh quality is not so good. So yeah, so I'm fine with this mesh quality. Now, coming back to the original question, uh, how do we define inlets and outlets? You could use create patch, but I hate to uh, look to for dictionaries. So I really like to define it myself. How do I do this? I like to extru just uh, go into my geometry, get rid of these ugly uh, normals here, select my inlet and then make a copy, shift D and then press P and then selection. And then what I have here is now a selection of nodes and I can now extrude this in the Z direction. And I want to extrude it, I'm not sure, 0 0.01 and then the other put to minus 0 0.01 and there is a good reason for that. So I'm going to, I hope I don't forget it uh, afterwards uh, when I open this up in Paraview. Okay, so this is my inlet. Then the outlet is on the other side. So we can also just grab those faces, copy them and uh, separate them. Extrude in the Z direction, 0.01, Control I, minus 0.01. Okay, and this is my outlet. Okay, and now it's only about the sides. And if I remember correctly, when I watch this, there is then the top and lower wall but uh, let's just watch this just let's just make sure that we use the same uh, boundaries here yeah so for some reason he meshes inside of the sphere but he doesn't use it in the simulation okay yes he deletes the object and then he meshes it so i i'm not sure why he does it Okay, then let me just inlet fluidity solid cylinder. I may have skipped already the boundary definition, so maybe it was in the geometry section. So sorry, just bear with me. I'm just looking for how he defines the the boundaries, uh, just to make sure that it is consistent. Is it here? No, maybe it's in the geometry level. Fluid domain, cylinder. No, yeah, so I apologize for this, that I don't know this by heart. Okay, so nah, that that's boring. You're not interested in me, me jumping. Or, ah, there you go, pipe wall. <laughs> I, uh, I, okay, I found this. So he calls it pipe wall. Let's just call it pipe wall. Here and then the other side as well. And then P, okay, and then extrude Z, 0 0.01, control I, minus 0 0.01, and then it's pipe wall. 
Okay, so that's it. Okay, so now we, I just save this again. I will just quickly delete our original mesh so we end up with only the boundaries here. And now I export them as SDLs. Now you might wonder why. I uh, select ASCII, object, and I delete this. And now what do I what I have do I have here? I have here inlet STL, outlet STL, pipe wall. And now inside those STLs there are solid regions called, called inlet. Now if you get in your blender something else, then you may need a video of mine. And namely uh, it's under videos here. This one hack for blender. Here I, I show you how you can improve your blender so you can so easily export STL files like I just did. Okay, and I like to use this, do this geometrically and not with a dictionary. Of course, you can use create patch. I really like to use a surface to patch with a tolerance of 1.4 and inlet STL. What this does, it takes or geomet or mesh loads inlet STL, which is here, and then it looks for all the faces which are closer than one, uh, one to the power of minus four and selects them and calls them inlet. And this way you can select inlets. And because with dictionaries, it's easy to with create dict, uh, uh, create patch dict, you can easily select uh, inlets and outlets, but uh, a curved surface is more difficult and, uh, and an arbitrary surface. So this is why I really like to use surface to patch, uh, to, to just select here cells, surface to patch inlet. And what this does, it took my sides and front and back, and then it created sides, front and back and inlet with 44 cells. Um, unfortunately, this created now a zero folder and wrote the mesh in zero. You cannot use um, uh, minus overwrite, so I have to manually delete the old mesh, move from zero the poly mesh into constant, and then just delete zero. So now if I refresh here, now you can see there is an inlet, and if I just select the inlet now we have here our inlet face and then still the sides i'm just going to do the same here is with outlet and then again just delete move and delete and now i will have an outlet On the other side here, ah, and I forgot the circle, of course. <laughs> okay, so we could just, uh, actually we could just rename sides to pipe walls. Let's just do this instead of pipe walls. I really should have done this. So now we have pipe walls, front end, back inlet and outlet, and I forgot the spheres. Uh, okay, yeah, that was my mistake. So let's just bring back the plane. So sorry about this, guys. Let's just select all of them, Shift D, uh, separate, and then let's just call it circle. Uh, extrude Z. No, 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 no. Extrude Z. 0.01, control I, minus 0.01. And why I'm doing uh, such huge uh, faces is to make sure that they cover the entire face, because if it has the same height as the mesh, then due to tolerance issues, some faces just disappear and that's just a pain. So I like to make it bigger. Uh, this is why I use here such uh, such large STL files. Okay, I just save it, delete this again, and then just export again all the STL files, ASCII object, 
very good so now I should have also a circle very good and now I just do this surface to patch also with circle then delete uh, then move and delete and now I have ah, so, sorry then let's just reload because now we have all those different boundaries and let's just show all the boundaries with different colors so yeah so front we have here circle we have front and back with diff so I just get rid of front and back yeah so you can see we have here pipe walls these two inlet outlet and then circle so we have now or full mesh which boundary so we have now pipe walls front and back inlet outlet and circle yeah so the pipe walls are walls and now what we really should take care of is to use also here walls and not a patch because later on in the simulations we may need wall functions and wall functions only work with this type where, you, where it says wall and not pa with patches. Inlet and outlet can be patches, but that's how it is. Okay, so actually that was the mesh. So very good. So now we have a full two, uh, 2D mesh uh, with a more, so here you have a structured mesh up until this point where you have uh, an unstructured mesh but it is of a very good quality so we can see whether my meshing algorithm is as good as uh, ANSYS Fluence meshing algorithm and if you want just take my object file and extrude it test it yourself or if you have some experience with Blender just come up with your own mesh you can maybe refine here just to have layers so I really could have uh, created a circle that is bigger and then um, and then extrude the inner circle so what I mean is here hide this hide this hide this and then hide the inlet so I could have just selected this inner circle and then extruded it uh, uh, so extrude it to the same place and then just extrude it slightly like this like this and then maybe even refine it and then you have two very very nice layers but this way the diameter is not uh, the correct one so if you want just do it yourself if you have a better mesh that you think is better just please let me know and then um, you can send it to me and maybe I can use your mesh or just uh, test my mesh and your mesh in, in simulations and see which one is better. So um, just feel free to play around with Blender if you want. If you want to use another mesher, do it uh, in Salome if you want. I just really prefer Blender because you can do, uh, do things, really nice things where you can manually just move the mesh nodes and uh, eyeball the mesh quality. So and so I hope that you learned with this uh, something about 2D cases, how you can really easily set up uh, 2D meshes and then decide yourself on the mesh quality and then how you can export it, how you can extrude the one layer for open form and also how you can define boundaries geometrically. Because of course you can use create patch, but that's uh, difficult for uh, complex surfaces. Okay, so now what I will do is here, I will just uh, um, unhide everything, save this, close this, I will close this and um, yes, so maybe I will just create a geometry folder and move the tooth files here to geometry. So we have the mesh in mesh, geometry in geometry, and I will just create a tut1 zip and 
Yes, so now you have a tut one zip and I will upload exactly this or push this to my uh, GitHub uh, account and then you can download it and then do whatever you want. For the next uh, live stream, I think it makes sense to split it here. I will just go ahead and then set up the case. We can take a look at a sh short look at what he does here. So he does a turbulence simulation of, I'm not sure, water or air. And then he defines the turbulent in the intensity uh, on the inlet. We can do that in open foam and wall functions, if I, be I believe. But now regarding the, the solution methods, yes, so he uses a K epsilon model, if I'm correct, then the simple model. And then we can just uh, see, so he uses uh, second order discretization terms uh, for, for the setting. So we can set this also in open foam uh, and then uh, run. He, uh, here are the under relaxation factors. Uh, I can show you how to set those. And yes, yeah, so the criteria, we can set all these. Yes, so for epsilon, he uses lower value. Yeah, so we can do this. Um, calculating solutions and then yeah, yeah, we can run the simulation. We can maybe even compare uh, whether we have the same uh, convergence behavior because uh, it converges after a couple of hundred iterations. Yeah, so no, it does not converge, it stops at 1000. So let's see. And then we can compare the velocity contour of the inlet and the outlet. And then pressure curves, turbulent kinetic energy and so on. Uh, so, but, but that's in the next tutorial uh, or the next live stream. And then in the uh, let's see how far we come with the simulation and the evalu evaluation uh, and then maybe in the next already or in the third uh, we can then go 3d and then do exactly this but for a circle and then set the up the uh, uh, no not for a circle for a sphere and then for, for us we can create the sphere with snappy hex mesh and or cf mesh but let's see what's the best and then we can just iterate from there and then let's see what how far we will come Okay, so that was now this part. As I mentioned, I will upload the zip file. Now let's come to the comments here. Uh, I'm just going to stop here. Okay, so oh, where was the last quiz with Enzys tutorial? So hi, first thanks for setting up this lesson. You're welcome. What solvers are we using? Simple form. Okay, so this was the last comment. Thank you. It's open from beginner friendly. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I set up the uh, my YouTube channel. But uh, if you watch my YouTube tutorials and there is wiki.openform.com slash tutorials, there are around 100 tutorials now for OpenFOAM. So uh, you now you have a, a very good introduction to OpenFOAM. If you're alone without any tutorials, it's very difficult. But now there are there, are, there is my YouTube channel and also wiki.openform.com. Okay, so I am very grateful to uh, use the FreeCAD topic to open from for your next live stream. Yeah, so FreeCAD, I can talk about this. I'm not very, very big fan of FreeCAD. Uh, Dr. Better say it, not so obvious. Abdul, you have to start with tutorial, just dive in. Exactly, boundaries are defined in setup, yes. Uh, ah, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> After meshing step, thank you. I missed, uh, so uh, as you can see, I have no idea about ANSYS. I'm trying to figure out the industry relevant solver. Open form is free, which is why I can understand it popularly why ANSYS is beginner friendly. Yes, exactly. Uh, the main reason with ANSYS is user friendly. It's UI, yes. And the next one is all in one program type, yes. Also, there is a support team, yes. That is very costly. Yes, ANSYS is very costly. I did not know surface to patch application. Yeah, as I mentioned, there are a lot of applications that are hidden, uh, but are really cool. Uh, and uh, it can really improve your uh, workflow and improve also your the quality of your results. Because if people are stuck with block mesh for 2D cases or stuck with Salome, 
to two D cases, then you can just do it manually in Blender and then uh, decide manually yourself on the mesh quality. So this is why I really like this approach for two D cases. Uh, the license cost is a half of the problem. Yes. Um, yes, I mean, for OpenFOAM, you can uh, run it on 4000 cores, whereas a 4000 core license of ANSYS is not very cheap. Could you please make a video about convergence and facts which are influencing it? We can do that in the next. We will do convergence plots in the next tutorial. Yes. Thermodynamics compressible cases. Yeah, we can do that in a later tutorial okay helps me a lot i'm glad that this helps i'm really looking forward to the next live stream thank you very much so uh, manos please pr try this yourself and then next time we can uh, progress with it i have a case where a container is open to the atmosphere what boundary condition may be suitable there there is an atmospheric boundary condition watch my uh, multi-phase simulation project. There I have a similar problem. Please also change the solver and compile and run this simulation and want to learn programming. wiki.openform.com slash tutorials then you go to okay I maybe just quickly really quickly show you here you can go here to collection by topic and programming and there you go there are a couple of programming tutorials one two three four five six seven eight nine tutorials only on programming okay so the one hour is now over so thank you guys for watching i hope that you learned something <laughs> in this live stream and i hope that you will look forward to the next live stream i think it's going to be next on next uh, uh wednesday let me just see I think next Wednesday, but I will announce it uh, also next week on Monday and I will definitely announce it on Wednesday or if it is really on Wednesday. So then we will progress with the case setup and the simulation itself and then the post processing and we compare at least visually the results between uh, ANSYS and, uh, and OpenFOAM. Conjugate heat transfer, uh, yeah, maybe in the future. Okay, so with that, uh, that was what I wanted to show you in this frame. So thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you in the next live stream. So bye guys.